Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series, Sega Racing Renaissance, where we review every single Sega 3D arcade racing game in a retrospective fashion, and today we're taking a look at Daytona USA 2001 on Dreamcast. Now this is technically a bonus episode because it never got an arcade release, but because it basically comprises everything that was Daytona USA on the Model 2 with some bonus courses, we're going to definitely take a look at it. Before we get to fire involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Now, the last time I talked about this game on my channel over two years ago, I was not the kindest to it. And that is down to the fact that the controls in the analog are some of the twitchiest things I have ever played in an arcade racing game, arcade or console. Now, I have been playing this with a wheel. I've been making adjustments to the analog controls in the game, as well as in the wheel settings on my PC. And I've gotten this game to the point where I think the controls are capital F fine. They are not great, but they are much better than trying to play with a controller or a Dreamcast wheel. But that is one thing I will say right off the top. Controlling Daytona USA 2001 can be a frustrating experience, but I will say flipping into that turn and landing it totally fine works for me. Now on the positive front, this game looks spectacular running on Dreamcast. It is an absolute gem in the visual department. And once you do get a handle on the physics, you can start winning races. It is just a different physics style than was available on the arcade version, and that is one of those things that I think they should have left the physics as they were. So many people had gotten used to the handling models in Daytona, so to change them up and make them so twitchy for a home release, maybe not the best thing in the world. And honestly, this is so a surprising game to me because when everyone wanted Daytona USA 2 on the Dreamcast, Sega comes out with something like this. They had flogged the Daytona horse, the original one, a few too many times by this point in time, and the controls really did take the score down. But leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think of this game. I would be curious because I've kind of been hanging on some of the negatives, just that control scheme and the fact that it wasn't Daytona USA 2. But on the positive side, and this is maybe the most definitive version of the original Daytona you could get at this point in time when it released. All of the graphics have been upscaled and redone. The game looks and sounds incredible. They have done a little bit of a weird pivot with the soundtrack. And when you start playing the game, you don't hear that classic Daytona soundtrack come out. But it's still an amazing racing experience, and that's because the tracks are still the same. The developers that made Daytona for the arcades were just absolute aces when it came to laying out a great racing track. And because these are identical to the arcade versions outside of better graphics, you're getting the exact same racing experience, and that is a 10 out of 10 any day of the week. And if you are struggling with this game, trust me, go into the options menu, tweak the analog settings around, use a wheel, emulate the game, tweak the wheel on your PC, and you will start getting better at this game. Just do not come at it with a controller or else you're going to think that the game is uncontrollable. And even in some instances with that wheel, it can still feel a little bit mushy, but you get used to it and sometimes you're just going to crash your car into a corner and it doesn't really matter whatsoever because you're still having fun. And that's the thing about Daytona USA 2001. Even with its minor flaws, it is still an absolute blast to play. You have so many different courses, and in this version you can do mirror, mirror, reverse. Gives you a lot of different options. I wish they'd kind of done a night and day cycle thing, but I understand there's only so much you can do. And this did always feel kind of like a budget release for Sega. So much so that Hasbro's involved in the publishing, which never really made much sense to me. But it's one of those things, if you've never played Daytona before, I don't know that I'd recommend Daytona USA 2001. I would probably emulate the original Model 2 version or get one of the modern PC re-releases. But if you've played the original Daytona and you want to check a new game out in the series that's basically the same thing, do not skip this game. And if you're a Dreamcast collector, I probably don't have to tell you to buy it because it's probably already sitting on your shelf. But because this is a Sega arcade racing game named Daytona, you know it's going to have an absolutely spectacular soundtrack. It wouldn't be Daytona without it. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and tell you more about my thoughts of this Dreamcast remake. But enjoy.
Every single track that comes from the original Daytona is a 10 out of 10 banger, and if you disagree with me down in the comments below, I'll listen to you, but I probably won't agree whatsoever. As we move on to more courses, I'm showing you all the ones in the game here. You can see that the ass end of the car loves to swing out, and that is where that analog twitchiness is coming in. And like I said, you can definitely dial in the controls, but this is the most unfortunate part of the game. It looks like Daytona, it sounds like Daytona, and in some aspects it feels like Daytona, but it doesn't quite control like Daytona, and that is the biggest issue. Now, fair warning, it's been a couple years since I have played this game, so it's not like I've been practicing for hours every single day just to get this capture. I spent more time dialing in the analog controls than I did actually playing the game, but it is still one of those things. It's near to a fatal flaw as far as I'm concerned, but I do love spinning around all the same. It's one of those things you just need to practice. You need to learn every single corner, every single apex of every single turn to get better at it. Now the good thing is if you just love racing the oval, getting a win here can be quite easy for sure. All you need to do is slightly move the analog stick or the wheel to the left and you can basically hold a perfect line. It seems like the control weirdness is more when you get further into the wheels travel or the analog sticks travel. Once you get past like that 15 to 20 percent the adjustments seem to just jump very quickly and you can end up oversteering when you think you're just giving it a little minor adjustment. But honestly you can increase the lap limit to this and play for 25 minutes minutes and it's gold but one more taste of soundtrack and I'll come back and talk about Daytona a little bit more Not as good as the tracks with the lyrics, obviously, but it's still a good time. And of course, you have the original Rolling Start Oval stage from the original Daytona. It is here exactly as you remember it. And don't forget in Daytona USA 2, they also redid the track. This is the most iconic track in the entire game, and I absolutely still love playing it. And I don't usually use the Lightning Car in Daytona USA 2001 because it is quite slippery, but for some reason I got better at it as I adjusted the analog steering controls here. Definitely still wasn't controlling it perfectly, but I got a better hang of it. But this one lap right here, this one course, is such an iconic Sega experience. If you've been playing arcade games in the 90s, if you've been playing video games in the 2000s, if you are a casual gamer, you probably at least sat down once and gone around this oval in some way, shape, or form. That is how iconic of a level this is. It's like the original Green Hill Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog. This is just all about Sega, and I love that Sonic is up on that mountain there, kind of like Mount Rushmore. But that's the thing about Daytona USA 2001. It is definitely not the best version of Daytona, but it is still a ton of fun in spite of itself. And that is because it has all the classic Daytona arcade tracks, plus a few bonus tracks for the game as well. But if you've never played a Daytona before, this is one that I don't recommend you start at. Just use the Model 2 emulator and emulate the original. Give that a go for sure. But this is the last Daytona video on the retrospective unless Sega decides to release a new Daytona game before I am done. And since I've heard no mention of that whatsoever, this is the last time you're going to see Daytona USA on the channel until Sega makes a new game. And that kind of bums me out. But short of that, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite Daytona game is. I would be curious. But we place fourth. We are done. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.